Hey everybody, what is going on? It is your boy, your dad, your American ambassador at the Chinese Motorsports Summit, Bamboo Panda Food, Shanghai Dumpling Dude, it's me, Gammy Noob. Today we're talking about Chinese motorcycles. Whether you love them or you hate them, chances are they're not really going anywhere anytime soon. And you're probably thinking, is Papa Yam really gonna give his esteemed stamp of approval on a Chinese motorcycle? Well, here's the thing. Many of you guys are gonna buy one anyway, so instead of preaching abstinence, I will instead teach you how to safely bump uglies with a Chinese motorcycle. Now you might be thinking, China is a massive country. Can I really make a broad sweeping statement about the reliability or build quality of all Chinese made motorcycles? While there are a few exceptions, Unfortunately, I can make broad generalized statements without much room for criticism because most motorcycles leaving China are all produced by the same handful of companies and are just rebranded differently. And unfortunately, most of them are absolutely terrible. Bro, this says typos on the warning label. Sure, you could buy a Chinese motorcycle for two grand that'll maybe last you a season, but once you start to become fed up with fixing everything constantly with limited parts availability, you will not be able to recoup any of the money you've spent on it by selling it used, as Chinese bikes don't hold their value anywhere near as well as Japanese bikes do. So genuinely, there are only a select few Chinese motorcycle manufacturers I can recommend in good conscience. They exist, but they're few and far in between. Sorry for the long intro, but Chinese bikes are a touchy subject, and I want to make sure we're all on the same page here. We're trying to have fun harmoniously. Also, no, no company paid me to make this video. That couldn't be more clear with the Boom BD250 fiasco, right? This feels like some absolutely wretched turd. <laughs> so without further ado, here are seven Chinese-made motorcycles that are actually worth buying. The first three motorcycles on the list come from Benelli. Is it a cop-out having three bikes from Benelli on the list? Eh, maybe, but most Chinese motorcycles are bad. Like, so bad, I can't in good conscience recommend anything that's sold on Amazon and shows up at your house in a box with sawdust and the crank cased. Oh my god, this thing is a cheap piece of crap. Benelli was founded in Italy in 1911, making it one of the oldest motorcycle companies in the world. But despite the duration of their tenure, they have never had anywhere near the long-lasting impact that many other motorcycle manufacturers with that many years under their belt have. The brand had a lot of financial struggles in the 80s and 90s, changing ownership many times. In 2005, they were bought by the Chinese company Kuanjiang Motors, QJ. QJ has been the motorcycling boogeyman for many years now, but they're actually recognized as a producer of some high quality motorcycles in China. The motorcycles available from Benelli will vary depending on where around the world, but I believe the first bike, the TNT 135, is available just about everywhere. The Benelli TNT 135 is their take on the Honda Grom. It's a fun, small, lightweight little mini bike, great for doing wheelies and burnouts during mini bike group rides. Is the Benelli TNT 135 a good first bike for an American? American rider, uh, not really, because its minuscule nature will not provide enough opportunity to learn how to control a motorcycle in a safe and purposeful way, in my humble opinion. But like I said in the intro, plenty of y'all get Groms as your first bikes anyway, so what the heck. The TNT-135 features a liquid-cooled 135cc single-cylinder engine that produces 13 horsepower and 8 foot-pounds of tiny tortellinis, which is more than the BD-250. Seriously. Compared to most motorcycles, that is nothing, right? But for the Euro Scooter Boys, 13 horsepower probably feels like a turbo Hayabusa. And actually, the TNT-135 makes more horsepower than a Honda Grom. You'll get your money's worth out of those extra CCs in the TNT. The TNT-135 is fun, lightweight, agile, and low risk, which allows you to ride slowly in a way that feels fast. TNT also has a five-speed gearbox, which will make it a little bit more capable of speeds higher than 30 miles per hour. TNT has the standard mini Street Fighter looks you'll find in a Grom or a Z125, and overall, the Benelli T135 is a fun motorcycle that's perfect as a mini bike when all Groms are out of stock. The TNT 135 costs just 2699 bucks, which in my opinion is cheap enough to take the risk of a Chinese bike, although the general consensus is the Benelli is pretty favorable. Second bike from Benelli is the Leoncino 500. I was actually able to ride the trail version of this motorcycle a year or so back, and I was genuinely impressed with the overall package. The Benelli Leoncino is a retro-styled naked motorcycle rocking that kind of modern scrambler aesthetic. The bike was first introduced in 2017, and it draws inspiration from the original Leoncino that was produced by Benelli in the 1950s and 60s. But it features modern technology and engineering to make it a capable and practical machine for everyday riding. If you're sick and tired of the 
same old beginner bikes that every baby squid and their brother rides, the Benelli offers a ton of character and charm for the beginner bike class. The motorcycle features a classic neo-retro bike look with a round headlight, wide handlebars, and a long flat seat. Unlike many retro-styled bikes that can get away with old tech and big cradle frames, the Leoncino is a fully modern bike with a trellis frame and liquid cooling. The Leoncino is powered by a 500cc twin-cylinder engine that produces 47 horsepower and 45 foot-pounds of torgos, easily outperforming the Royal Enfield Scram 11 and surprisingly outperforming the CBR 500R and the Ninja 400 as well. This bike has a six-speed gearbox and upside-down forks. The motorcycle features a slipper clutch, which makes for smoother downshifting, which is a good feature for a beginner rider so they don't have to end up locking the rear wheel during aggressive or ill-timed downshifts. Other features of the Leoncino include a digital instrument cluster and LED lighting. The motorcycle also comes with switchable dual-channel ABS, which can be beneficial if you choose to do some light scrambling with this bike. On the same topic, the trail version of this bike has a 19-inch front end with semi-knobby tires compared to a 17-inch in the normal street version. The Benelli Leoncino 500 is a cool bike for someone who wants a retro-styled motorcycle that you won't see every day. The Leoncino 500 costs 6200 bucks for the street model and 6500 for the trail, but I found a brand new model for sale at a dealership for less than six grand. So like any bike, pricing will vary based on where you live. Now, one thing I want to point out here is a trend you're going to see are these Chinese bikes run pretty cheap. You're probably going to save a little bit of coin, probably about 15 to 20% over a traditional Japanese bike or hell, even a European bike at a similar spec. The next motorcycle from Benelli is the TRK 502, a sport touring adventure style motorcycle. Benelli also makes the larger TRK 702, but I feel like the added cost pushes it outside of the realm of what you should be paying for a more obscure Chinese motorcycle. Positive reviews aside. Whereas the TRK 502 can be found for around 6,000 or 6,500 bucks at dealerships around the country, according to my research, which is cheaper than a KTM Duke 390 Adventure and a V-Strom 650. The Benelli TRK 502 is an adventure touring motorcycle that's designed for riders who want a comfortable and practical machine that can handle long distance rides and a variety of terrain. The motorcycle was first introduced in 2016 and has since garnered relatively positive reviews from motorcycle publications, a feat not easily accomplished by many Chinese bikes. The TRK 502 is powered by a liquid-cooled 500cc parallel to an engine that produces 47 horsepower and 33 foot-pounds of torques. The motorcycle features a rugged and adventurous design with taller windscreens, hand guards, and a luggage rack. Plus, like any proper adventure bike, there's the option for a dull set of aluminum panniers as well. The fuel tank holds over 5 gallons of gas, which should get you about 250 miles between fill-ups, give or take, which is pretty good range. This motorcycle makes decent power, but it's definitely heavy. About as heavy as a fully-fledged ADV bike that's rocking an extra 500 cubes of displacement. The TRK502 weighs 546 pounds, fully fueled and ready to ride. It'd be pretty sweet if it weighed 502 pounds, but it doesn't. The sheer size of the bike and the less than perfect suspension make it a bit of a dog off-road, but it will happily take you to the Starbucks and back for the third of a cost of an R1250 GS. It isn't exactly a do-it-all motorcycle, but you can't expect that for less than 7,000 bucks. If you want a more adventurous sport touring bike with ADV style and sophisticated Benelli badging, the TRK502 could be an option for the right rider. All right, the next motorcycle manufacturer on the list today is from QJ Motors, the flagship line of bikes from Kwajiang, the owner of Benelli. That felt like a weird sentence to say, but hey, as we trundle on towards infinity, Chinese motorcycles are bound to become as commonplace as other Chinese products in your home. Even the ones that live in the drawer besides your bedside table, if you catch my drift. It's actually suspected that QJ Motors is planning on releasing their flagship motorcycles here in the States, utilizing the same distribution that they use for Benelli. It is debatable if these bikes will bring anything genuinely new to the market, or if they will just continue to adopt existing technology and engineering and sell it at a cheaper price. These these bikes are considered to be generally okay, and considering they just use clones of Honda or Suzuki engines, they're probably reliable to a degree as long as you check the torque specs on every bolt and change the oil before riding the first 10 miles. QJ has so many motorcycles, none of which I have ridden personally since they haven't made it to the states yet, so I don't feel 100% confident recommending a specific model, so Euro boys, let me know if you have experience riding QJ bikes and what you think. I was definitely surprised by the Benelli I rode a while back, but with QJ coming to the the States, it is definitely a brand to keep an eye out for the next couple of years. I mean, they built a 350cc bike for Harley Davidson, the 350X, that's being branded and sold as a Harley Davidson in China, with rumors that it will be used stateside for Harley's rider training courses. What a crazy time to be alive, especially considering what happened in the 80s. Spoiler alert, the rest of the motorcycles on the list today are 
are going to be from CF Moto. Like I mentioned earlier, there are only a few select Chinese motorcycle brands I can genuinely recommend in good conscience. Venom Motorsports and Boom and all those Amazon bikes are not one of them, but luckily CF Moto is rapidly expanding their lineup so they can satisfy the needs of most riders, not just beginners. The first motorcycle from CF Moto that's worth checking out is the 300NK. If you have a burgeoning interest in motorcycling but aren't quite ready to drop the cash, the 300NK from CF Moto hits well below the mental price barrier. If you're looking at a bike that costs 5,500 bucks from the factory, then you're thinking about taxes and fees and interest if you're financing insurance gear and before you know it, you're well into it for over seven grand. And while a motorcycle that costs below $4,200 isn't immune to those added costs, it is much easier to rationalize because it hits below that five grand price barrier. It's easier to just be like, well, four grand equates to X months of rent or just 25% of X amounts of paychecks. So for just the sheer accessibility of it, the 300NK gets a recommendation. This bike has a 292cc single cylinder engine that makes 29 horsepower and 10 foot pounds of torque, has a six speed gearbox, dual channel ABS, TFT dash, LED lighting, and the 300NK is punching way above its weight class in terms of features, and I'm kind of here for it. Now for the more intermediate rider, the 700CLX is an amazing value too. Nearly $2,000 cheaper than a Yamaha XSR 700 while making similar power features and kind of looking the same too. The 693cc twin makes 74 horsepower and 50 foot-pounds of torque, but unlike the MT-07, the CLX 700 has a fully adjustable KYB suspension in the front and the rear, which is a really premium feature on a motorcycle that costs as much as a Kawasaki Supermoto. Unlike the beginner bike, CF Moto invested more of their money in premium components than frivolous tech. This bike has just an LCD display, although it does have two ride modes, cruise control, big feature there, and traction control. But what you lack in a TFT display, you get the adjustable suspension and Jaehwan brakes, who I think is actually entirely owned by Brembo now. 700 CLX from CF Moto costs just $6,799. That is a bit on the higher side for a Chinese motorcycle, but CF Moto has a good reputation and a pretty sizable dealer network, so it could be worth looking into the CLX compared to a used MT-07 or an SV650. The last motorcycle on the list is definitely on the high end for a Chinese bike, but remember, we're not talking about a crap Venom Amazon 250cc boom biked ultra street super legal bike you've seen on the channel recently, but a bike from CF Moto that is made using high-end parts from the most reputable manufacturers and uses a literal KTM engine. While KTM engines might not be the gold standard for bulletproof reliability, they are leaps and bounds above what you would find on most generic private label Chinese motorcycles. The last bike on the list today is the Ibex 800T. Yes, another adventure bike. It seems like that is where these brands are spending a lot of their energy and resources these days. ADV bikes are usually pretty darn expensive and they're popular as all heck. The BMW 1250GS is always making lists for the most popular motorcycles sold around the world, thanks in part to Obi-Wan's use of one in train spotting too. The Ibex 800T is the top of the line motorcycle from CF Moto and they really threw all they could at it. But the kicker is, even as the top of the line motorcycle, it still only costs 10 1500 bucks. It has a 799cc parallel to an engine, which is literally the exact same engine from the Duke 790. CF Moto is manufacturing all the Duke 790 models actually now, which is a fun peek behind the curtains of global capitalism. The Ibex is making power to the tune of 79 horsepower and 54 foot pounds. It has fully adjustable KYB forks, rebound and preload adjustable rear shock, and dual J Juan calipers in the front. Every ADV bike has to come equipped with more technology than NASA had at its disposal in 2005. So of course, the Ibex has a 7-inch TFT with Bluetooth connectivity, a CF Moto rider app with GPS and system monitoring, although directions may be shown in inches, so be prepared for that. It also has plenty of rider comforts like an adjustable windscreen, heated grips, heated seat, and a bi-directional quick shifter. For the budget-conscious ADV rider with an appreciation for global manufacturing, the Ibex 800T is a super competitive package that few could rival at that price. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. Whether we like it or not, we're going to see a huge huge influx of Chinese manufactured motorcycles in the coming years. Maybe QJ will make a turbocharged Hayabusa clone from the factory. I guess only time will tell. Thanks again and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I can't wait to see what the comment section looks like on this video. Fact, the name for the shape of a Pringles is called a hyperbolic paraboloid. Interesting. Goodbye.